workload on the body. And this is chiefly going to be digestive workload. So the less work your digestive system has to do, the more resources your body is going to have available to it for healing. Using smoothies, juices, beyond tangy tangerine, eating as simply as possible and keeping track of your foods. That's step number one. And then uh, actually step number one is the probiotics, the Bioluma Nightly Essence. Step number two is keeping track of all your foods. Start to get in more protein and less refined sugars and carbohydrates. That means breads, fruit juices, certainly desserts and sweets are verboten, forbidden. Uh, you should never be eating those. I mean, we, you have a condition at this point in your life, ma'am, where you don't have the, the, you, you don't have the luxury of being able to indulge in certain foods, at least until you get everything straightened out. So getting yourself off of the processed breads and flours and cereals and, and grain types of foods, and instead getting those calories from easy to digest protein. If you can do whey, it's the best. If you can't do whey, try egg. If you can't do egg, do hemp seed protein. Make sure your protein is mixed up in, in a smoothie so it's easy to digest and use the digestive enzymes with the protein. You see how we're working here, ma'am? We're making, giving your body nutrients that are easy to process, and we're focusing on the digestive system. Stay on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Uh, you may want to double the dose of it, but make sure you're sipping on it all day long. And then if you want to throw in a couple other things, get on the Ultimate Daily, uh, multiple vitamin, and then throw in the Z-Radical as well. There's tons, tons more you could do, but as I say, the longest journey begins with a single step. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step process, but what you'll notice is once you start doing these things, you're going to notice that you're feeling better and you can start to wean yourself off of the drugs and, and very, very, very likely add years to your life as well. Thanks for your call, Susan. If you want, uh, if you want to stay in touch with me, that would be great. Just shoot me an email, ben at ksco.com, or just call me on the radio. Appreciate it. Does that help, ma'am? It sure does. Thank you. God bless, Susan. Good luck with everything. All right. Uh, Irene in California, welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on? Irene, going once. Hi, oh, wait I'm a so minute. sorry. No worries. How are you doing, Irene? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm uh, doing good. How can we help you? Okay. Well, I've got, um, I was tested, uh, this was several years ago, for hypothyroidism. Okay. And I'm almost sure I've got um, adrenal fatigue also. I, They're linked. I was, if you have yeah. one, you got the other. If you have a, your thyroid is pooped out, chances are your adrenals are overworked. There's a very important connection between the adrenal glands and the thyroid. Chemists or biochemists or doctors will call it the adrenal thyroid axis. An axis can be thought of as a straight line with an adrenal, your adrenal glands on one end of that straight line and the thyroid on the other end of that straight line. The adrenals are your emergency glands, emergency energy glands. They're like a generator for when your power goes out in your home. You have an emergency generator to make sure you can still run your electricity and your lights and such. The adrenal glands are like that. They provide emergency generator energy. On the other hand, your thyroid is the gland that regulates normal energy under normal conditions. When the thyroid starts to give out, the adrenal gland will pick up the slack. And when the adrenal gland is overworked, the thyroid will start to slow down. They, work bo they work, both work together. So if you are hypothyroid, there's a very good chance that you have adrenal fatigue. So then the question is, what the heck is going on in the adrenal glands? Why are my adrenal glands pooped out? Why are my adrenal glands overworked? Well, the adrenal glands are the stress glands, and that means there is some kind of chronic stress that is getting into the body. Same story. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's the same story. Some kind of offending agent, some kind of stressor, some kind of burden is being put on the body, and the body can't handle it. The biggest burden on the body, the ultimate adrenal stimulus, the ultimate cause of adrenal activation is something called hypoxia, which is a fancy way of saying low blood oxygen. So the first thing to do for all adrenal fatigue issues, and you're in good company, Irene, millions upon millions of Americans are dealing with this problem. The first thing to do is make sure you're oxygenating correctly. Make sure you're practicing your deep breathing techniques. Slow, deep breathing in through the nose, slowly. It's very important. The slowly part is super important. If you go fast, you can mess things up. So slowly in through the nose and then slowly out through the nose. The belly goes, when you take your inhale, the belly goes out. When you take your exhale or you push out the air, the belly goes in. And you want to do it really, really slowly. And you always want to exhale a little bit more than you inhale. The exhale is really where the re relaxation takes in. It's like when we're, when we're scared, we always go like this. <gasps> and that's, a, that's, an, that's adrenal activation. That's fear. <gasps> you know how you, you get surprised and you suck in real quick? That's mm -hmm. the inhale. That's the sympathetic side. That's the, that is the uh, stress side, if you will. The relaxation is on when you find out that the, the, the danger is past. You go, 
Oh, like that. That is the exhale. That's where you activate the relaxation response. So taking in uh, breathing, uh, breathing in, and then breathing a little bit extra out is where you activate the stress response. You'll calm down the adrenal glands. That's step number one. Step number two, make sure you're getting enough salt. The adrenal glands are very responsive to salt. Get on Celtic sea salt. You can also use your uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine or your Ultimate Classic. Those will also get you some nice salt minerals. Uh, between the Celtic sea salt and your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, that'll take care of your salt needs. Nobody should ever be on a low salt diet, by the way, low sodium chloride diet. I hate that word salt because whenever we hear salt, we're always thinking sodium chloride, but really the salts are, are all your minerals. So anyway, uh, Celtic sea salt, ultimate classic, tangy tangerine, and oxygenation. And then the third thing for the adrenal glands is vitamin C. No gland in the body is more dependent on vitamin C than the adrenals. I'd be using 5,000 to 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. Make sure you do it in small doses because uh, it will give you a little diarrhea if you do too much. So you want to sip on it slowly. You'll get 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. We're running out of time here. Zinc 50 milligrams a day, very, very important for the adrenal glands. If there's any digestive distress or there's any blood sugar stress on the body, that will also mess up the adrenal glands and cause adrenal fatigue issues. So you gotta, you're going to want to focus on problem foods and on, uh, eating less calories, getting more nutrients with, uh, in terms of liquid nutrients, more, ca- more nutrients, less calories, and then keeping your blood sugar stable by using more protein, especially whey protein, and getting on the Sweeties product, one of my favorite of the Longevity products. Tons more you could do. Uh, the Biolumin Nightly Essence might, might help you as well. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. Bye for now. Self-reliance. Survival supplies. Survival skills. National experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo. A must-be-there event. Presented by American Living. This massive expo will include special guests. David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network. Along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations. Walk through a bomb shelter and much, much more. Two big days. April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo. America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you, has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day, unique affordable survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927. 866-229-0927. Or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. 